Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at three ways to mask your drawings in layout. When I say mask your drawings, what I'm talking about is uh, clipping or hiding or taking some part away from it. Um, this is could be very simply, you know, there's more in your drawing than you want to show. It might mean showing only part of your drawing at a time. Uh, and there's a couple different ways to do this, and we're going to run through what those are right now. All right, so the first is the most simple. Um, in this drawing, I have this drawing, and it's at a specific scale. So it's at a scale that I need it to be at, and it doesn't fit on my page. So the simplest way to cut your drawing is to use the bounding box. So to do this, there's a thing we have to do. So if I, it, it really all comes down to this preserve scale. If preserve scale is turned on, then when I grab these handles and I move them, I will clip the box. So on this left side, maybe what I want to do is I want to bring this in and have it be like that. I don't need that much of the, the ground running out. That looks good. On the right side, I need to pull it in. If this box is not on, when I go grab a handle, what's going to happen is the drawing is going to move around. It's going to do some weird stuff. It might change shape if I grab a corner handle. Um, I'm going to hit undo and I hit preserve scale. And then what that's going to do is when I move this over, it's going to allow me to pick a spot. I'm going to try to go right for this peak. Right about, well, close to it. All right, that's what I want. So what that does is that gives me a chunk of that drawing that I could then on the other page, maybe have my line on the other side of the peak and then show the rest of it on the second page. Uh, I might accentuate this just a bit. I might come in here with uh, a line, maybe do something like this. And then maybe I'll zoom in here and do something like, you know, do a little, little indicating that this is I mean, that's like a break or something. I don't know. I might do something like that to show, you know, this, that this breaks and then may, or maybe even a note that says, you know, on the next page, I don't know how you want to document that. The point is, this is the simple way. Ooh, even down here, see how I have this little white spilling over? This isn't going to cause an issue. It's going to print as white. So I could actually, if I wanted to, I could bring that up, tighten that up a little bit like that. Uh, that would work too. Anyhow, that is the simplest. That's, that's way number one. That is the first and easiest way to uh, mask or, or change what's visible in the page. Let's jump to page two. Another thing we have an option doing uh, is, so on this page, I'm going to say I have the rear elevation of this drawing, and I don't like this kind of wonky, awkward green. It's the yard. I get what it is. I know what it is, but I don't want to show it. So what I can do is I can come in with my pencil, and I can use the snap points on this for the most part. So I might snap here, come in here, come along, and, and where is it? I think it turns right about there. And I could trace that shape. I'm just going to straight the rest of the way, like that, with a white shape, like that, that covers that up. Um, obviously, there's an issue here. One of the things I do if I was starting to do this kind of mask, I would take my mask, and this is this is like literally like laying down masking tape on an image. I would take that and I would grab the image and I would group that together. So when I put these in a group, that one thing it does is it makes things like anything that's supposed to be above it, I can just bring that back to the top. I don't have issues with that. Uh, it also means I won't accidentally move the mask. If I move anything, it's going to move all of it together. If I come in here, double click, this doesn't look very good. So what I probably would do is I would turn the stroke off for this outline. So that would give me this. Still not ideal. So I would probably do something like, like I showed before on the other page. Maybe we'll do one more line, one more edge. Comes over to here, comes to here, comes just past here, something like that. Take that edge and make sure it does not have a fill. So it's edge only. And then actually, probably let's clean this up just a little bit. If I come into this, uh, maybe I'll take this point and scoot it up slightly. 
actually I should probably add another point to it. Um, but yeah, I could, or actually, you know what I could do? I could use both. Let's use both things that I was talking about. If I pick this one, if I pick this image right here, preserve scales on, I could cut this window back like that, which would get rid of my extra lines over there. There we go. So yeah, something like that. Quick and easy way to just basically cover stuff up with an edge or with a with a uh, another shape is what I'm doing there. So a great way to mask, and this lets you do things that, like I said, this is more than just a box. The you know when I was reshaping the box, I was just chopping chunks off. In this case, I have a little bit more fidelity with how I want to go in there and trace that sh those shapes. The third type of mask is actually using a clipping mask inside a layout. So with this, we're gonna to hop to the third page. Uh, I just have this big old drawing on here again, because I'm gonna say that we want to pull a detail out around the front door, something like that. What I can do is grab a shape, any shape, it doesn't even matter, we'll do a couple different shapes just to show, uh, but I just draw a shape around the part I want to hold on to. So this is what I want to keep is what's covered up. And I go select both of these, the drawing and the shape, and then I say, create clipping mask. And what that does is it just uses that shape as a clip and then that's it. It's that simple. And the cool thing is when this is in here now, I, I still have the ability to adjust this. I could make it bigger or smaller. I want to show, you know, the stairs coming all the way down. I don't know what that's, that's a weird thing to show. Uh, probably would go the other way and clip it off the other way like that. Um, the other thing I do is because this is a shape, it does still have shape properties. So I can come down here to my shape styles and I can do things like turn a stroke on there and I can control how, how thick is that stroke? Uh, what color is it? That kind of thing, just like I would with a normal shape. So kind of a cool way to do that. Like I said too, I'm going to undo a couple times. Let's back up. Let's go do a different, uh, let's, let's do something unusual like a circle. Let's take a circle, start right here, pull that out. Um, so if I select both of these, same thing, create clipping mask, and now I get a circular one. Very cool, uh, and again, it doesn't even have to be a normal shape. I can actually come in here and I could do something like, I don't, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something clever <laughs> to come in here and clip out of here, but I could, in theory, you know, I could make something that looks like this. Uh, I'm gonna include this one over here too, a little dip here. I could make a shape like that, and those could then, same thing, create clipping mask, and I could actually do that. So this is a weird example, but if you had an odd shape in your model that you had to, wanted to pull out and call attention to separately from the main model, you could do something like that. Cool thing too is I could take this, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just gonna copy this real quick, and then I'm gonna undo a couple times. And one of the things I could do here is I could take this and maybe drop the scale way down on this, so it's real small, and then Scoot that over here. If I paste that clipping mask I just created, I could in theory do something, you know, like where am I calling this detail out from? Well, this detail happens to be right here. So I could do something like this where I blow up a clipping uh, detail right out of the main one. Again, I appreciate you rolling with me on this one. This is this is a, a terribly strange shape to use, but I wanted the the point here is that uh, you know that I could. Should you? I don't know. That's your call. I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do with your own drawings, but you could. Um, so yeah, check that out. A great way. So there's three different ways to do those masks. We have resizing the the bounding box. We have using shapes, drawing shapes over and literally masking. And then of course, creating a clipping mask with a shape and the original drawing. So hopefully you learned something new out of there. Um, I know we uh, sometimes when we talk about layout, we just talk about bringing drawings in and working inside the drawings and that kind of thing, uh, laying things on top, dimensions, call out text, that kind of thing. Um, but there's a lot you can do with the drawing. You don't have to simply settle for the scene I made in SketchUp comes in and plops down on layout and that's it. There's lots of options for how you can clean that up and this is just one of them. 
If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think about this. Have you done this before? Have you, have you done this thing? Uh, if so, I'd love to hear about it. Let us know about it down below. Uh, and if you have ideas for other videos, things that you think would be cool, let us know about that too. We like making these videos a lot. We'd like them even more. Let's try something you want to see. Thank you.